All right, ready? Yes, you're on. Okay, how's everybody doing today? Uh, it's been a great couple days. Uh, we had a really good Zoom session, or not Zoom session, but meets um, today uh, with about 10 kids, actually. So it was a lot of fun to see everybody. Um, a couple of you guys, just, we did a couple of cahoots, and uh, we did that math thing, but that didn't go over so well. So um, anyways, I hope you guys are doing well. We are on chapter 46. We'll be chapter 46 and 47 today. Chapter 45 let off where Stanley and Zero being in a hole and they happened to be in a lizard nest. And the warden caught them, Mr. Sir, Mr. Pendaski was there too. And so Stanley's frozen and the last sentences end with Stanley could hear his heartbeat. Each beat told him he was still alive, at least for one more second. Chapter 46, 500 seconds later, his heart was still beating. <laughs> Mr. Pendansky screamed. The lizard, which had been in the cereal box, was springing toward him. Mr. Sir shouted in midair. Stanley felt the blast shatter the air around him. The lizard scurried frantically across his very still body. He did not flinch. A lizard ran across his closed mouth. He glanced at Zero, and Zero's eyes met his. Somehow they were both still alive, at least for one more second, one more heartbeat. Mr. Sir lit a cigarette. I thought you quit, said one of the other counselors. Yeah, well, sometimes sunflower seeds just won't cut it. He took a long drag on his cigarette. I'm gonna have nightmares the rest of my life. Maybe we should just shoot them, suggested Mr. Pendansky. Who? asked the counselor. The lizards or the kids? Mr. Pendansky laughed grimly. The kids are gonna die anyway. <laughs> At least we got plenty of graves to choose from. We've got time, said the warden. I've waited this long. I can wait another few and her voice trailed off. Stanley felt the lizard crawl in and out of his pocket. We're gonna keep our story simple, said the warden. That woman's gonna ask a lot of questions. The AG, or Attorney General, will most likely initiate an investigation. So this is what happened. Stanley tried to run away in the night, fell in a hole, and the lizards got him. That's it. We're not even gonna give him Zero's body. As far as anybody knows, Zero doesn't exist. Like Mom said, we got plenty of graves to choose from. Why would he run away if he knew he was getting released today? Asked Mr. Pendansky. Who knows? He's crazy. That's why we couldn't release him yesterday. He was delirious and we had to keep watch over him so he wouldn't hurt himself or anybody else. She's not gonna like it, said Mr. Pendansky. She's not gonna like anything, we tell her, said the warden. She stared at Zero in his suitcase. Why aren't you dead yet? She asked. Stanley Oles only half listened to the talk of the counselors. He didn't know who that woman was or what AG meant. He didn't even realize they were initials. It sounded like one word, AG. His mind was focused on the tiny claws that moved up and down his skin and through his hair. He tried to think about other things. He didn't want to die with the images of the warden, Mr. Sir, and the lizards etched into his brain. Instead, he tried to see his mother's face. His brain took him back to a time when he was very little, all bundled up in a snowsuit. He and his mother were walking hand in hand, mitten in mitten, when they both slipped on some ice and fell and rolled down a snow-covered hillside. They ended up at the bottom of the hill. He remembered he almost cried, but instead he laughed. His mother laughed too. He could feel the same light-headed feeling he felt then, dizzy from rolling down the hill. He felt the sharp coldness of the snow against his ear. He could see flecks of snow on his mother's bright and cheery face. This was where he wanted to be when he died. Hey. Caveman, guess what, said Mr. Sir. You're innocent after all. I thought you'd like to know that. Your lawyer came out to get you yesterday. Too bad you weren't here. The words meant nothing to Stanley, who was still in the snow. He and his mother climbed back up the hill and rolled down again, this time on purpose. Later, they had hot chocolate with lots of melted, melted marshmallows. It's getting close to 4.30, said Mr. Penansky. They'll be waking up. The warrant told the counselors to return to the tents. She told them to give the campers breakfast and to make sure they didn't talk to anyone. As long as they did as they were told, they wouldn't have to dig any more holes. If they talked, they would be severely punished. How should we say they will be punished? One of the counselors asked. Let them use their imagination, said the warden. Stanley watched the counselors return to the tents, leaving only the warden and Mr. Sir behind. He knew the warden didn't care whether the campers dug any more holes or not. She found what she was looking for. He glanced at Zero. A lizard was perched on his shoulder. Zero remained perfectly still except for his right hand, which slowly formed into a fist. Then he raised his thumb, giving Stanley the thumbs up sign. Stanley thought back to what Mr. Sir had said to him earlier and the bits of conversation he'd overheard. He tried to make sense out of it. 
Mr. Sir had said something about a lawyer, but Stanley knew his parents couldn't afford a lawyer. His legs were sore from remaining rigid for so long. Stanley, standing still, was more strenuous in walking. He slowly allowed himself to lean against the side of the hole. The lizards didn't seem to mind. All right, chapter 47. Let's see how long, yeah, we can finish this today. Chapter 47. Ugh. The sun was up and Stanley's heart was still beating. There were eight lizards in the hole with him. Each one had exactly 11 yellow spots. The warden had dark circles under her eyes from lack of sleep and lines across her forehead and face which seemed exaggerated in the stark morning light. Her skin looked blotch blotchy. Satan, said Zero. Stanley looked at him, unsure if Zero had even spoken or if he'd just imagined it. Why don't you go see if you can take the suitcase from Zero, the warden suggested. Yeah, right, said Mr. Sir. The lizards obviously aren't hungry, said the warden. Then you go get the suitcase, said Mr. Sir. They waited. Satan Lee, said Zero. Some time later, Stanley saw a tarantula across the dirt not too far from his hole. He had never seen a tarantula before, but there was no doubt what it was. He was momentarily fascinated by it as its big, hairy body moved slowly and steadily along. Look, a tarantula, said Mr. Sir, also fascinated. I've never seen one, said the warden, except in... Stanley suddenly felt a sharp sting on the side of his neck. The lizard had, hadn't bitten him, however. It was merely pushing off. It leapt off Stanley's neck and pounced on the tarantula. The last Stanley saw of it was one hairy leg sticking out of the lizard's mouth. Wow. Not hungry, huh? said Mr. Sir. Stanley tried to return to the snow, but it was harder to get there when the sun was up. As the sun rose, the lizards moved lower in the hole, keeping mainly in the shade. They were no longer on his head and shoulders, but had moved down to his stomach, legs, and feet. He couldn't see any lizards on Zero, but believed there were two between Zero's knees shaded from the sun by the suitcase. How are you doing? Stanley asked quietly. He didn't whisper, but his voice was dry and raspy. My legs are numb, said Zero. I'm going to try and climb out of the hole, Stanley said. As he tried to pull himself up, using just his arms, he felt the claw dig into his ankle. He gently eased himself back down. Is your last name, your first name, backward? Zero asked. Stanley stared at him in amazement. Hadn't he been working? Had he been working on that all night? He heard the sound of approaching cars. Mr. Sir and the warden heard it as well. You think it's them? Asked the warden. Oh, it ain't Girl Scouts selling cookies, said Mr. Sir. He heard the cars come to a stop and the doors open and shut. A little while later, he saw Mr. Pendansky and two strangers coming across the lake. One was a tall man in a business suit and cowboy hat. The other was a short woman holding a briefcase. The woman had to take three steps for every two taken by the man. Stanley Yelnets, she called, moving on ahead of the others. I suggest you don't come any further, said Mr. Sir. You can't stop me, she snapped, then took a second glance at him wearing pajama pants and nothing else. We'll get you out of there, Stanley, she said. Don't you worry. She appeared to be Latino, with straight black hair and dark eyes. She spoke with a little bit of a Mexican accent, trilling her R's. What? What in tarnation? The tall man exclaimed as he came up behind her. She turned on him. I'm telling you right now, if any harm comes to me, we'll be filing charges, not only against Miss Walker and Camp Green Lake, but the entire state of Texas as well. Child abuse, false imprisonment, torture. The man was more than a head taller she was and was able to look directly over her as he spoke to the warden. How long have they been in there? All night, as you can see by the way they're dressed. They snuck into my cabin while I was asleep and stole my suitcase. I chased after them. They ran out here and fell into the lizard's nest. I don't know what they were thinking. That's not true, Stanley said. Stanley, as your attorney, I advise you not to say anything, said the woman, until you and I have had a chance to talk in private. Stanley wondered why the warden lied about the suitcase. He wondered who it legally belonged to. That was one thing he wanted to ask his lawyer if she really was his lawyer. It's, 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 it's a miracle. They're still alive, said the tall man. Yes, it is, the warden agreed with just a trace of disappointment in her voice. And they'd better come out of this alive, Stanley's lawyer warned. This wouldn't have happened if you released him to me yesterday. It wouldn't have happened if he wasn't a thief, said the warden. I told him he would be set free today, and I guess he tried to take some of my valuables with him. He'd been delirious for the last week. Why, why didn't you release him when she came to you yesterday? The tall man asked. She didn't have proper authorization, said the warden. I had a court order. It was not authenticated, the warden said. Authenticated? It was signed by the judge who sentenced him. I needed authentication from the Attorney General, said the warden. How do I know it's legitimate? 
The boys in my custody has custody have proven proven themselves dangerous to society. Am I supposed to just turn them loose anytime someone hands me a piece of paper? Yes, said the woman, if it's a court order. Stanley has been hospitalized for the last few days, the woman explained. He's been suffering from hallucinations and delirium, ranting and raving. He was in no condition to leave. The fact that he was trying to steal from me on the day before his release proves. Stanley tried to climb out of his hole, using mostly his arms so as not to disturb the lizards too much. As he pulled himself upward, the lizards moved downward, keeping out of the sun's direct rays. He swung his legs up and over, and the last of the lizards hop off. Thank God, exclaimed the warden. She started toward him, then stopped. A lizard crawled out of his pocket and down his leg. Stanley was overcome by a rush of dizziness and almost fell over. He steadied himself, then reached down to hold Zero's arms and helped him slowly to his feet. Zero still held the suitcase. The lizards, which had been hiding under it, scurried quickly into the hole. Stanley and Zero staggered away. The warden rushed to them. She hugged Zero. Thank God you're alive, she said as she tried to take the suit, suit as she as she tried to take the suitcase from him. He jerked it free. It it belongs to Stanley, he said. Don't cause any more trouble, the warden warned. You stole it from my cabin, and you've been caught red-handed. If I press charges, Stanley might have to return to prison. Now I'm willing, in view of all the circumstances, to it's got his name on it, said Zero. Stanley's lawyer pushed the tall man, pushed past the tall man to have a look. See? Zero showed her. Stanley Yelnats. Stanley looked too. There in big letters was Stanley Yelnats. The tall man looked over the heads of the others at the name of the suitcase. You say, you say, you say he stole it from your cabin? The warren stared at it in disbelief. That's Im, Impa, that's Impa. She couldn't even say it. Well. Wow. Pretty interesting, huh? Mrs. Chen's very impressed by this as well. Uh, wow, we are almost done. Um, now, I'm not sure if I'm going to read another book or not. I may. You know what? I think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to continue this for the summer. Um, I do have a special treat for next week um, as we wrap up the school year. Um, uh, next week is already going to be January. That's crazy. Um, I'm going to do a, a end of the year thing for my class and you guys will be able to see it next week that we have a meets call. So I'll be sharing also, also with parents as well so you guys can have your own copy of it. So um, I love you guys. I hope you guys are doing great. See you tomorrow. Oh, yes. I will talk to you guys tomorrow too. Friday. It's Friday. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.